Alright, so I just finished watching uh, one of Lewis Rossman's uh, videos and uh, one of the main points he was making was uh, generally don't buy stuff from Amazon, especially fuses. He tested some fuses and they didn't do well, some of the purchases. Um, he didn't test this particular kit. I happen to have three kits, uh, none of which he uh, tested. And um, so I thought it'd be a good time to make this video, though I've been uh, waiting about uh, two months with this kit, haven't used it yet. So, in any case, it's a bunch of fuses there and uh, fuse holders. So now the uh, 12 gauge wire here uh, connects to both ends. So we're gonna have to cut the uh, wire where we want it. So I think uh, about there, and uh, that just barely uh, fits into there. So we will push, squeeze, and uh, this automatically cuts it. Now we have the insulation we got a strip um, I think I'll do the uh, shortest setting I believe and this tool strips it really easily we are gonna attach ferrules to uh, both ends of the connectors there the gray ones are the uh, 12 American wire gauge as you can see there and it does look like that's about the right length of wire now we just want to give the stranded wires there a little bit of twist because they are little strands they can come apart easily and then uh, we just insert them into the connector there and uh, twist this in the same direction then all the strands should go into the tube pretty easily like that now we grab the auto crimping tool it's ratcheting because uh, it clicks and uh, locks into place as it closes uh, pretty straightforward just insert it in there and uh, squeeze down and it uh, squeezes on there and of course when you crimp you should tug on it and it should not come right off now we'll strip the other end and I purposely wanted uh, one side to be long we'll look at why later so we did the uh, shortest I saw there was a little bit of space you probably did too so that might be the uh, best distance right there and uh, maybe a little too long um, there you go and again, we got our uh, ferrule for 12 gauge. Uh, give just a slight twist, and uh, your hands should be clean. Everything should probably uh, clean the wires a little bit. Um, just uh, you don't want any grease or anything. It'll mess with the connection. But we're not going to worry about that too much in this video. So uh, twist that on there. It looks like uh, we're towards the end a little bit better, probably. And uh, again, just insert it in the tool. Very simple, just squeeze down and we have a crimp. Always uh, tug on it, make sure it won't just pop right off. So now I'm gonna kinda copy something I did uh, before. This was for uh, power banks though, with uh, barrel plugs to plug in there. These are uh, 10 watt, 10 ohm resistors. So we can put uh, 10 volts across this. Each one of these will pass one amp of current in that case. Um, that's the absolute max though. And then they're bundled together so they won't dissipate heat as well. I think I was gonna limit this to one amp, um, but even two should be fine. But we can do four amps for a little bit. And uh, I just took uh, four again and uh, wound them up. I tried to get the wires the same length, but if one was sticking out or two a little more than the others, I just snipped off the excess. Now I'm just going to connect them together with uh, these little uh, spring loaded uh, connectors. Should be able to slide these in. If they won't slide in one way, maybe you got to uh, turn it 90 degrees. But uh, that went in pretty well. And then we'll uh, slide that in there. Try to make sure every single wire is touching the uh, metal on there. So now I have a uh, kind of a greenish gray. A fuse here and uh, it says one on there the other ones have uh, different numbers and I'm going to try to plug this in for the first time so those are female spade uh, connectors and uh, these are blades so I think this is in all the way and uh, I tried to lock this into place without a fuse but uh, it didn't really lock into place that seems to be about as far as I can push it so I don't know if that's supposed to be a stop or uh, something to let it lock into place if you press it hard. Okay, now I really pressed it hard. It is uh, going on. So yeah, I think you gotta push it real hard. 
now we will uh, get ready to uh, test it so if I actually tug on these um, they should pop out this actually isn't a good uh, connector I uh, was hoping I could use these screw down ones they would definitely grab the wire uh, really good uh, but the ferrule is too big um, so if I just strip the uh, wires I could probably get them in there but not with the ferrule but in uh, any case this will be our test we have the uh, bench power supply so it can go up to uh, 10 volts but right now we have current limited to 0.5 amps half of a full amp and uh, it's a one amp fuse that we put in there so it doesn't matter which side positive and uh, which side is negative power supply is off right now I'll turn it on and um, if uh, it gets a big rush of current it might turn off for uh, short circuit protection but there you can see we got 0.5 amps flowing and the way it does that is it lowers the voltage in order to get that amount of current again we can go up to uh, 10 volts but really not a good idea especially when they're uh, bundled uh, together so let's uh, get this back uh, to amps so we got the 500 again that's because we're limiting the uh, current and there we go let's uh, work our way to one amp so we should be fine if this cuts out current completely that means we uh, blew the fuse so there we are one amp that should be the uh, limit so we got a tenth and uh, twelfth thirteenth fourteenth and um, so yeah I'm pretty sure it should have blown a while ago and now we are at that two amps we can go up to a three this won't go all the way to a four but yeah that's not good we should not be having uh, that much uh, current so all right we finally uh, blew the fuse there at uh, probably about three amps if I would have gotten a little bit slower maybe it would have blown a little earlier um, but again we got uh, way above one amp which uh, does not look good so now I never was able to get it to snap all the way uh, shut and um, I had to kind of wiggle this and pry to to get it off right there and feels like the fuse is in there pretty good but uh, yeah there's uh, charred marks on there but uh, again uh, the fuse blew it took a lot longer than I think it should have again I don't use a lot of fuses so I don't know if it has to be like high current for a little while there's a slow blow uh, fuses and stuff um, but uh, in any case doesn't look like that uh, blew as early as it should so in conclusion even if you're like me where you bought a lot of stuff on Amazon and you've been mostly happy with it so far I definitely agree with Lewis Rossman do not buy uh, fuses on Amazon he did have one brand uh, that did okay this is like a no name uh, Chinese uh, brand and uh, so uh, not surprised this one did uh, bad but uh, in any case best buy them somewhere else probably so I haven't bought them anywhere else and uh, I don't have any good spots to buy them uh, but uh, you should definitely learn where you should uh, and definitely don't want to mess around with fuses their whole point is to blow to protect uh, circuitry and you from harm so in any case uh, I set the power supply back to 5 volts, 20 milliamps uh, max, because that's usually what I have it set to. So, thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen, and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.